thing there. If I hold my finger steady, you can it will come and meet way. my thumb in a minute. Can you see? My thumb's staying stationary. Yeah. And it's moved past. So that enables the table to go up and down its little railway track here smoothly whilst maintaining a synchronous drive to the table connected to the rest of the machine. Mm -hmm. And that gives you the flexibility to uh, keep perfect synchronism whilst the table is in transit. And it means also the torque converter is not having to be fiddled around with. Yeah. Um, also, beautifully, let, let's talk about um, the, uh, the table itself, Ian, because um, the original machine, did that have glass discs? It had glass it did, discs. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it and did. What, what have you discovered about use of glass discs? Um, it's not absolutely ideal. Um, I <laughs> built a machine oh, uh, when I was about 17, some 40 odd years back, and I used ground glass discs, mm. which gave a better coefficient of mm. friction. But the trouble is the ground glass tended to wear away the little wheel. Mm. So um, it was introducing another variable to the system. Mm. Um, In what way wear? What, why was wear happening? Um, basically because the wheel, little wheel here, is of a finite thickness. And if you can imagine, um, if you had a, uh, let's say something a large wheel, let's say that diameter, mm. then whereabouts is it turning? Because the outside will want to turn faster than the inside mm. and it would naturally skid. Mm. And if you were lucky, it would be turning on the, on the midpoint. Mm. And this wear uh, was reflected in, in the ground glass. So you were getting little particles of brass yep. scraped off the inside and yep. outside surfaces of yep. this. The fact that the thing was moving up and down was yep. dragging it yep. across what became a relatively abrasive surface. Mm -hmm. Sandpaper. Yeah, so you've, you've got a, well actually sand is made from glass, isn't yeah, it? Well, glass is made from sand, yeah. so um, mm -hmm. you, you've got a perfect abrasive uh, mm -hmm. building up here yeah. to start wearing away the wheel. Mm -hmm. Now, in the short term, um, that's uh, adding um, uh, powder on there and will reduce the friction because it, it, it will cause more slippage. But actually, it's got a long-term problem, hasn't it? Because mm -hmm. you're changing the diameter of the you, wheel. You are indeed. And then I used the uh, original, the, the, the plate glass there, mm. and I found that steel wheels didn't grip as, as well as brass wheels. What's your theory? Why is that? Uh, maybe the coefficient of friction between glass and steel is um, different from, from that and brass. Mm -hmm. But even so... Could, the, could it have anything to do with the fact that steel is harder than brass? Because brass is made from copper could, and zinc? It could, it could well be. Mm. It could well be. But even so, I've slightly serrated the um, edges of the, the, the brass to mm -hmm. try and enhance any, any grip that we can actually get. So what other measures have you done to improve the grip? Um, also by hanging more weight ah, on right. it. What's this? Show us these weights then. Anyway. Right. Um, let me show you on this yeah, second. This, easy, yeah. uh, this one had more problems with than the others, so there's obviously more weight. These are just chunks of, of, of brass and they're actually on, on the arm. On the original, they just had a chunk of brass behind the, um, the wheel here, mm. but I found it just wasn't enough to get the grip. Mm. The option here would be to increase the thickness of the wheel, mm. but then you are uh, lessening the accuracy of the machine mm. uh, because you're getting a much thicker point of contact. Yeah. Ideally, you want an absolute knife edge contact yeah. mm. but you can't have that because it's a trade-off between the amount of friction you can actually mm, yeah. actually get so the whole thing really is a trade-off mm. and where it really matters the most is where you have the null point mm. if you have a very very thick disc that straddles the null point then nothing really will happen for quite a bit of displacement yeah. but if you had a knife edge any slight movement of that knife edge would start giving you movement. So there, again, it's a trade-off between yeah. the thickness of this, the friction, mm -hmm. and the amount of mm -hmm. error that you're actually generating. Okay, for all of those electronic people that are listening, um, there's a very good analogy here. Um, if your uh, output transistors on your power amplifier, <laughs> I'm gonna get a little bit technical here, but if they're not biased correctly, you can get a very small DC offset on the output of, of the power amplifier. 
and you get what's called crossover distortion, where the positive part of a sine wave, an audio wave, um, reaches zero, it goes to zero, and it hangs around for a while, it carries on horizontally, and then the lower half of the sine wave is produced. So you've got this coggle, and you can badly hear that. Mm -hmm. So that when uh, an audio amplifier is being set up, you ensure that there is a crossover point, and they overlap, and actually, at that point, both the positive output transistors and negative output transistors are switched on at the same time. And the whole amplifier can get very hot if you haven't got this crossover point exactly right, because you've got output plus and minus shorting out the power supply, and at that crossover point, you've got them both turned on. So it's, in electronics, it's quite a hard point to maintain. And Ian's having the same thing in the mechanical world as the electronic people do in their amplifier world. Mm -hmm. So Ian, um, when this um, table is pulled across and, and the wheel passes through the null point, um, you're going from um, uh, a positive and a negative value at this side, isn't it? No, positive value. Positive, right, positive side at this side yeah. where I am, yeah. it goes through zero and it becomes negative over there. Um, if that you hadn't have got this weight on here, you'd be getting um, slippage all the time. Yeah. Um, when I've seen these um, integrators made before, um, Hartree and Porter have chosen quite a small little wheel there. Mm. I I've seen a larger wheel used. What do you think their reasoning might have been? Um, I think with a larger wheel, um, obviously you you get a, a better transference of, of torque mm. because you you have got a, a, a greater uh, diameter and radius. So, the so if you use a, 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 a wheel that's twice the size, you get twice the torque. Yeah, yes, indeed. Which means that the early half of the uh, torque amplifier yeah. isn't having to do so much work and you've yeah. got greater reliability. Yeah. Why, why do you think they, they chose a small wheel? Um, well, basically, you would then have to have another scaling factor mm. up here um, because this diameter of the disc is, uh, the wheel here is quite critical mm. to meet the gearing and scaling factor mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. So you then maybe have to um, amplify this by a factor of two mm -hmm. on the other side of the mm -hmm. torque amplifier. Mm -hmm. And then it's questionable whether the torque amplifier has the, has the uh, power Mm. then to transmit it. So it, it's quite a, a, a balancing act. It's a trade-off. Well, I, I, trade I, I think at that point we'll just end quickly because the camera in my right hand is running out of memory rapidly. Okay. I don't want to miss anything. So I'll finish that and I will finish that.